Taxiing an aircraft is one of the first skills that a pilot must learn in their training. Pilots taxi aircraft from the ramp or aircraft parking spot along taxiways that lead them to the proper runway for takeoff. After landing, pilots taxi the aircraft back to the ramp. Although this may seem simple, it is a fundamental skill that must be learned in order to ensure safe and efficient taxiing. The first step in learning how to taxi is to recognize how an airplane's steering, brakes, and throttle work. Unlike automobiles, airplanes are not steered on the ground using a steering wheel. Instead, pilots control the direction of the aircraft using their feet and the rudder pedals. When a pilot wants to turn to the right, the pilot applies pressure to the right rudder to steer the nose gear of the aircraft to the right. If a pilot wants to turn to the left, the pilot applies pressure to the left rudder to steer the nose gear of the aircraft to the left. Another difference compared to automobiles is that airplanes have differential braking, which means that the two brakes can operate separately, allowing the pilot to apply the brakes independently if needed, such as when making a small radius turn. For example, if a pilot steps on only the right brake pedal, the airplane will start to turn to the right. If a pilot steps on only the left brake pedal, the airplane will start to turn to the left. If both brakes are applied at the same time, the aircraft will come to a stop. The final difference between driving a car and taxiing an airplane is that airplanes use a throttle knob on the instrument panel, not a gas pedal like automobiles, to accelerate the airplane. When a pilot moves the throttle forward, it will remain in the same position, which causes the engine to produce the same amount of power. Whereas a person driving an automobile removes their foot from the gas pedal, the vehicle begins to decelerate. Knowing these key differences will make taxiing more understandable to new pilots. The next step in learning how to taxi an airplane is proper foot positioning. When looking at the rudder pedals, the bottom of the rudder, known as the rudder cup, is where the pilot should place their feet while taxiing. The upper part of the rudder pedal is the brake, which should only be applied when necessary. This is done by the pilot sliding their feet from the bottom of the rudder to the top and then pressing down to apply the brakes. Once the pilot is done braking, they bring their foot back down to the bottom of the rudder pedal. If a pilot leaves their feet on the brake part of the rudder, they can unintentionally cause the brakes to engage and cause unnecessary wear on the brake pads. As mentioned before, an airplane's throttle is increased and decreased by advancing or pulling out the black throttle knob located on the instrument panel of the aircraft. The pilot's right hand should remain on the throttle while taxiing in order to adjust the throttle and quickly react to potential hazards or traffic. Pilots can fine-tune their throttle setting by placing their index finger on the top of the throttle rod and sliding their fingertip back a desired amount to accurately add power. The throttle will remain in the same position, producing the same amount of power until the pilot adjusts it again. This is important to remember when taxiing. When beginning to taxi from a full stop, the pilot will have to smoothly advance the throttle while releasing the brakes to cause the plane to move forward. Shortly after the airplane is moving, the pilot slightly reduces the power because less thrust is needed to move the airplane forward while taxiing. Pilots use the yellow taxiway centerline marking to taxi by putting the aircraft's longitudinal axis over the taxiway centerline. Before taxiing, it is important that the pilot either contacts the proper taxi or ground clearance frequency to receive taxi clearance directions, or at an uncontrolled airport, announce their taxiing intentions to other aircraft in the vicinity. Pilots should have a notepad and airport diagram on their kneeboard to ensure they copy the proper taxi clearance, as well as visually confirm the taxi clearance by referencing the airport diagrams. It is also important that the pilot identifies any hot spots or hazards along their taxi clearance. Once the pilot begins taxiing the aircraft, it is important that they focus their attention to the outside of the aircraft, scanning for other aircraft taxiing, landing, and taking off, as well as other vehicles, airport personnel, and wildlife. By using peripheral vision and a sweeping scan, pilots can detect any potential hazards while taxiing based on their taxi clearances. It is also important that pilots maintain a safe taxi speed to allow for a quick reaction to hazards and unexpected circumstances. Aircraft should be taxied while on the ramp or near other parked aircraft, roughly at the speed of a person walking slowly. When taxiing not near parked aircraft away from the ramp, a speed similar to a person walking fast should be used. When preparing to slow down while taxiing, the pilot must reduce the power first, then apply brakes as needed. If the pilot leaves the power in and begins to brake, the brakes are less effective and will wear quicker. 
When coming to a stop without turning, the pilot should evenly apply pressure to both the brake pedals to maintain the desired path. Once the pilot is ready to accelerate, they smoothly advance the throttle and release the brakes to help the airplane continue at the desired speed. When stopping at runway hold short lines or taxiway intersections, pilots should leave enough space between the hold short line or taxiway intersection and their aircraft so that the hold short lines and taxiway intersections are visible to the pilot. This assists with maintaining situational awareness and remaining safe while waiting upon further taxi clearance. Turning while taxiing requires the pilot to adjust the power, rudder, and brakes accordingly based on the radius of the turn. For larger radius turns, the pilot reduces the throttle first to slow the aircraft down, then applies smooth rudder pressure on the rudder pedal on the side the turn is being conducted. If the aircraft is taxiing faster than desired, the brake should be smoothly applied before the turn is initiated. Throttle may be applied during the turn if the aircraft begins to slow while turning. As the pilot completes the turn, the rudder pedals are neutralized. The pilot's feet are moved to the bottom of the pedals, and the power is set to maintain a safe taxiing speed. When a tighter radius turn is necessary, the pilot will reduce the power first and smoothly apply the rudder pedal in the desired direction of the turn. If the turn radius still remains larger than desirable, the pilot applies the brake on the rudder pedal that is being applied to produce the turn. This will allow the pilot to turn the aircraft around the main landing gear on the inside of the turn. If the airplane slows too much during the turn, the pilot smoothly applies power to help assist the airplane through the turn. As the pilot completes the turn, the rudder pedals are neutralized, the pilot's feet are moved to the bottom of the pedals, and the power is set to maintain a safe taxiing speed. Pilots must be wind conscious or know where the wind is coming from while taxiing. A tailwind will cause the aircraft to accelerate while taxiing, whereas a headwind will slow the airplane when taxiing. The pilot must reduce or add power to maintain a safe taxi speed based on the current winds. Strong winds can cause taxiing aircraft to drift away from the taxiway centerline. Just like when flying, wind corrections must be applied to continue on the desired path while taxiing. When taxiing with quartering headwinds, the pilot should turn the control wheel into the wind, which raises the aileron on the wing in the direction where the wind is coming from, which creates a downward force on the wing. The elevator should remain neutral by keeping the control wheel centered, not pushed forward or pulled back. This will help maintain directional control during taxiing. This is often referred to as climbing into the wind. When taxiing with quartering tailwinds, the pilot should turn the control wheel away from the wind and apply forward elevator pressure. This causes the aileron on the wing in the wind to deflect downward, as well as the elevator to deflect downwards to maintain directional control while taxiing. This is often referred to as diving away from the wind. Taxiing is a skill that all pilots must learn before beginning to fly. Students need to learn how to maneuver the aircraft on the ground using the proper power settings while correctly using the rudder pedals and brakes to ensure they can safely and effectively maneuver the airplane while on the ground. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.